Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today another detailed forecast update coming your way. We've got a lot to be talking about today, some tropical rainfall up in the Northern Territory and over in far North Queensland as well, some severe weather expected for Tasmania, Victoria and New South Wales and a rain bomb expected to develop across Western Australia and the Northern Territory. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you're brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Your support lately has been greatly appreciated. But we're going to start things off straight up in the Northern parts of Australia, specifically over in far North Queensland where they have have had a decent helping of rainfall overnight from onshore flows providing showers and the odd thunderstorm up in the far north of Queensland between Cardwell up to about uh, the Daintree Rainforest or just a little bit further north of that they have reported accumulations up to 40 millimeters over the past 24 hours so some decent falls up there and the rainfall is going to continue throughout the course of today as well if we get a radar loop up right now just over the past hour you can see not only are we seeing some strong winds just offshore from the far north Queensland coastline some of the shoals just outside of far north Queensland picking up winds gusting up to 65 kilometers an hour into the gale force zones. And we've got some light showers streaming ashore at this time as well. Nothing too crazy in terms of rainfall accumulations though I can assure you that. Uh, but the majority of this rainfall up in far north Queensland has already fallen over the past couple of days. We still do have a couple more drops expected throughout the course of today but the winds and the rainfall will slowly ease off today and into early tomorrow. Still though some showers expected to continue into the later parts of this week but they will clear out by Friday morning and then take a look at this it looks like a dry run from Friday afternoon through Saturday and then deep into next week I mean Saturday Sunday Monday on to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and even Friday next week, the 27th of September, we have a week-long period of dry weather expected up in Queensland's far north. So for those that are excited to get a little bit of dry season activity going on up there, it's certainly going to be the next week uh, of weather. It's going to be quite dry up there. And I mean, just take a look at the rainfall accumulations up here. A big donut across far north Queensland for this time period. Uh, take a look at this. Uh, between Friday afternoon through to Friday midday, uh, that's Friday the 20th to Friday the 27th of September, just a couple of millimetres of rainfall expected across the majority of far north Queensland. This is the driest spell that I've seen up there since probably about September or October last year. A very dry period indeed, typical for this time of the year. However, um, it does mean that those wet season rains aren't too far off. So don't get too accustomed to the dry weather. It's only going to last for a couple of weeks, a month at the most, and then you're going to get inundated with some pretty significant rainfall from then on. But this is going to do wonders for the soil moisture anomalies up in far north Queensland. I mean, take a look at this. It's much wetter than average across much of the far north and extending up towards Lockhart River and Thursday Island as well through the entire Cape York Peninsula. We can't be forgetting about our friends up there. We have an extreme dry spell that's kind of... Uh, extreme wet spell rather than... It's kind of plaguing the far north of Queensland. So it certainly is looking uh, pretty nasty for wet uh, for when the wet season does actually start to come. And I mean, take a look at soil moisture values. They're at 100% across Queensland's Cassowary Coast and about 98% across the Daintree, which means any further rainfall on top of uh, the areas that I've just mentioned means that it's just going to become runoff straight away and we're going to have some pretty significant flooding problems from the first heavy rainfall. But take a look at this Thursday next week. Those values have fallen off a cliff. Just a couple of days of warm, dry weather have brought those soil moisture values down into the high 70s, which is much more, uh, much better news for heading into flood season. It's still a lot wetter than average and floods will happen a lot more um, quickly and a lot easier from these soil moisture values. But it is substantially drier than what we were expecting to be heading into the real wet season uh, with. So this is some really good news for up in far north Queensland. The forecast that we made initially for devastating floods kicking off straight away with wet season 2024-25, that might need to be thrown out of the window and it certainly will be revised in our October 1st edition of the Big Wet Forecast coming out October 1st uh, on this channel, so make sure you are subscribed for that. But yeah, we're definitely going to have to revise our flooding forecast up in far north Queensland So and for the better as well, so stick around for that and that's going to be a lot of good news that video. However, the elephant in the room, which I did mention at the start of the video, was the rain bomb across Central Australia. And I mean, just take a look at this. I mean, that's about 30% of Australia's entire land mass at soil moisture values are above 90%. So this is a concerning forecast indeed. And that's when we get what we're going to dive into right now. So for tropical weather lovers, don't go anywhere. The next 10 minutes or so is going to be basically focused around tropical weather. I do have a better idea on what to do as a forecast as well for this situation. Yesterday, I was very uncertain with what to say 
for this rain bomb event, but I can say with a little bit more certainty right now, it's going to be just a really big, complex, low pressure system developing from about Saturday onwards from pulse thunderstorms expected to fire up across the northern parts of Western Australia and into the Northern Territory as well. Definitely going to be a good chase day Saturday afternoon and evening under dry roads and a good chance of pulse thunderstorms across much of the Kimberley and even into the Pilbara as well. So for those chasing up in Fitzroy, Crossing Halls Creek, that sort of area, it might be a day to get out there Saturday afternoon and evening. You might get some pretty good long-lived uh, pulse thunderstorm activity then. This low pressure system will continue to deepen throughout the course of the week and you can see it here, a trough expected to extend between Exmouth right up towards Darwin in the Northern Territory. It looks like we're going to have a pretty widespread severe weather outbreak throughout Sunday as well in the northern parts of Western Australia before an actual low pressure system starts to develop through uh, Monday and Tuesday. That's going to develop in around the West Australian uh, Gascoyne or the Southern Pilbara region and drag in a lot of moisture from the north across the northern parts of Western Australia and inundate them with some very heavy rainfall through Monday and Tuesday. And this is a complex low pressure system here. There's a lot of moving parts to it, but we can expect moderate to heavy falls across much of the Gascoyne and South interior of Western Australia, even into the goldfields as well. I think between a line of Carnarvon down to sort of Mekathara down to Kalgoorlie and then across to about Cocklebiddy in the Euclid district of Western Australia. I think anywhere between this line here could and further north of it could receive some significant falls from this weather event. I don't think it'll make it out into the wheat belt, that's for sure, uh, and certainly not closer to the coast and around Perth. It's going to be a couple of hundred kilometres away from Perth at all times, this weather system. But yeah, moving into South Australia through Tuesday and Wednesday next week, firing up a lot of thunderstorms on Wednesday afternoon, and as this low pressure area is dragged into South Australia and the Northern Territory, it's got a pretty interesting track to it. I mean, just look at the rainfall that it fires up across much of the Northern Territory and South Australia as well, not to mention the rainfall it fires up across Western Australia throughout Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. This is what I call a severe thunderstorm outbreak and we're certainly going to be seeing some strong thunderstorms outbreak across parts of Western Australia and the Northern Territory and certainly this is looking like it's going to be some of the heaviest September rainfall that they've had either on record or in a very, very long time indeed. And that's reciprocated amongst the rainfall um, accumulation forecast here. So from Saturday onwards right through to the end of next week, we're looking at some pretty high rainfall accumulations. In fact, some very high rainfall accumulations across the Kimberley, the Pilbara, the north and south interior, much of the Gascoyne, and even into the goldfields in the south, a bit in the Euclid districts as well of Western Australia. In fact, it's really only the wheat belt and the southwest divisions that miss out on the rainfall here. The majority of Western Australia is expecting to pick up some pretty healthy rainfall accumulations. And you can see a lot of the rainfall has shifted out of the northern territory territory and into South Australia and Western Australia. Still though, some good falls are expected across the Northern Territory. Peak rainfall accumulations should be up to 150, potentially up to 170 millimetres in one or two locations and maybe even more in some isolated places of Western Australia. I'd not be surprised if uh, week-long accumulations from Saturday the 21st to Friday the 27th of September in at least one or two locations in Western Australia amounted to more than 200 millimetres. It certainly looks like it's going to shape up like that. There's some good accumulations throughout the Kimberley Broom expecting about 40 millimetres, Fitzroy crossing about 70, Horse Creek about 100 millimetres over there just from this forecast. Marble Bar also expecting about 30 millimetres of rainfall, same with Newman into Karangini National Park, and then down towards Megathar and Kew as well between 20 and 50 millimetres possible there. Into the goldfields around Lanista, even across towards Waluna, expecting between 50 and 100 millimetres, and into far uh, eastern Western Australia, into the remote parts of Western Australia around Warburton and Giles, expecting up to 120 millimetres of rainfall over there. So some very heavy accumulations are possible. And I'm going to revise my advice from yesterday. If you are a camper or a grey nomad moving through Western Australia, either get yourself closer to the coast, closer to good roads, or even into the Northern Territory, and you want to get pretty far into the Northern Territory as well. It looks like Ayers Rock and areas are around that, such as Alice Springs, will miss out on the really decent rainfall from this weather event. There's still going to be some good rainfall around Yalara, just outside of this rock, so there will be some good rainfall here and there, but again, I don't think it's going to be as heavy as what it will be in Western Australia. Certainly, Western Australia looks to be the place where all the rainfall is going to fall. The GFS model is calling for it more to be a border situation between WA and the NT, and the Axis G3 is kind of calling for the same thing as the Eastern Earth model, just a little bit more of sort of a northern bias to it into the Northern Territory. But yeah, I can say with a high degree of certainty along the Northern Territory and WA border into the Kimberley, parts of the Pilbara and the North Interior, you're guaranteed to get some pretty heavy rainfall from this weather event here. 
it looks like it's going to be pretty much a hit all round. There still will be places that completely miss out on some heavy falls just because it is going to be thunderstorm based, but I reckon the majority of places will pick up some healthy accumulations. Into the Northern Territory as well, expecting some good rainfall across much of the state there on top of the heavy rainfall that they've already received around Darwin and parts of the Northern parts of the state. There's some good accumulations being reported there. South Australia is a little bit more of a wild card, however, and something we're going to need to talk about in greater detail at a later time. Now, switch the Eastern West uh, back to the Eastern Wilbur model for Tasmania, Victoria, and New South Wales. That's the next part of the video right now. We do have a run of winter weather expected there, and you can see it here on the rainfall forecast over the next 10 days. Some pretty high accumulations expected across much of Tasmania, but even into Victoria and New South Wales as well, which we're going to break down for you in greater detail right now. So it is a bit of a clearer day across much of uh, the east coast of Tasmania, but the west coast is currently getting thrashed by some pretty significant winds and severe weather as a cold front makes its passage through the state. And you can see here winds are currently being reported well into the gale force zones here outside of Gaffs Hill, Woodspring expecting, well, and currently reporting winds up towards 70 or 80 kilometres an hour. Gaffs Hill gusting to about 100 kilometres an hour. So it is starting to get quite gusty across much of Tasmania and the snow is going to start to pick up for the higher elevations pretty soon. It'll be a cool night tonight. It'll be a windy one as well across much of the mountainous areas before another cold front swoops up from the south on Thursday mid-morning into early afternoon, bringing snow to lower elevations across much of Tasmania, especially into the southwest wilderness region, where we could be seeing snow down to about two or 300 metres there. Into the more northern parts and the central parts of the state, snow will be down to about five or 600 metres, but still quite low lying uh, compared to other cold fronts that we have had this year and a pretty decent helping of rainfall is expected as well. In fact, accumulations just over the next 48 hours alone expected to be quite high across quite a wide swathe of Tasmania, up to 50 millimetres in the southwest wilderness region and about 30 to 50 millimetres across areas more centralised to the uh, mountainous areas such as Mount Reed or Strawn. I hope I'm expecting about 10 millimetres along Seston, about 5 to 10 millimetres as well, much of the northern and the eastern parts of the state between 5 and 10 millimetres up there. Uh, you can see the weather is expected to ease off just temporarily on Friday before another cold front pumps through Friday evening, bringing gusty winds and cool temperatures once again, and just onshore flows from then onwards, powered by these high pressure systems and ridges building themselves across South Australia and New South Wales. It's going to funnel rain ashore for coastal parts of Victoria and Tasmania, and as such, create wet weather across those states throughout this weekend and even in towards early next week as well. A strong cold front will belt through again on sort of Tuesday or Wednesday next week. The details are still a little bit out in the oceans to decide at this time so we will keep an eye on things on this weather system it is about a week away so again there is a little bit of uncertainty with this forecast still but we will uh, we are expecting some good rainfall from that weather event across Tasmania but it's going to be after that I mean take a look at this it develops into a east coast low type system offshore from New South Wales and Sydney with some pretty strong winds so take a look at this wind gusts up to 125 kilometers an hour across the Tasmanian coastline and if this east coast low does develop I mean the rainfall accumulations are going to skyrocket across much of New South Wales and Victoria in particularly around Mallacoota. I mean, take a look at this, rainfall accumulations over the later parts of the forecast district, uh, of the forecast between Wednesday and Friday of next week. We're expecting rainfall accumulations to max out at about 150 millimetres there, so some pretty high accumulations are now forecasted. This is quite a concerning forecast indeed, however, uh, it is not reciprocated amongst other forecast models. So it looks like there's still a lot of details out in the, for the oceans to decide with this weather system here. The Axis G3 is actually pretty confident in a weather system like that developing same with the East and West, so we're going to have to keep a very close eye on things with this weather forecast here, especially with the East and West and the Axis G3 saying the exact same thing on the forecast. In short, just a bit more winter weather to go for Tasmania, at least until this weekend, especially uh, tomorrow. It's going to be quite a wintry day across much of Tasmania. It's going to be very cold, windy and wet and even snowy for higher elevations above sort of two or 300 millimetres, or should I say lower elevations. That's pretty low to get snow down to about 200 metres and it could be surface level across across parts of the southwest coast, but that is quite a rare thing indeed. Uh, and then a bit of a dry spell into the early parts of next week, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday morning before another cold front belts through Victoria and Tasmania and turns into an east coast low on the Tasman Sea by Thursday. If this forecast does come to fruition, there will be much more detail in a later forecast update on this channel. But that is all that I have time for today. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point. Your support lately has been greatly appreciated. And that is a very short-winded forecast for Australia. I don't really have much time though. Uh, 
a lot more detail that I did want to go through today, but I will try and get through some more detail tomorrow. Thank you so much for the support on the channel recently. We're trying to hit 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year and all support counts. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and I could not run this show without them. So again, there, the support is greatly appreciated, but that is all for me today and I will catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.